Welcome back to Pennies in Your Path, friends. I'm Jody Aiken, where I hope and pray to help you move your doubts in God to fully trust in Him. I'm recording today's episode in the home of my son and my daughter in love. I have the honor and privilege and blessing, all of that wrapped up in one, to be here a few days to help out with our grandson uh, while she actually finishes her final clinical hours to become a nurse midwife. Uh, she'll graduate in May and our son is actually deployed right now. So what a blessing that uh, God has allowed me to have the time to come and do this. But that being said, he's taking a nap, so I've got to hurry up and share with you what's on my heart. <laughs> By the way, Happy Easter. I'm so excited to um, think about what the Lord has done in my life and in my family's life, knowing that he is risen, that he's still alive. As I was thinking about what I wanted to share with you, what came to me was a memory of where I grew up as a young girl. There was a lot next to, it was an empty lot, uh, next to the house that I grew up in. It was full of uh, weeds and wildflowers. But one of my favorite pastimes was to go and walk around in the field mining for um, dandelions. I loved to find a dandelion, you know, but I, the, the face of the dandelion that I really loved was when the yellow petals would fall off and then it would form what I would call like a white puff ball, if you will. You know, you, where you, when the wind blows, that uh, all the seeds off of it blows off. But because they were quite fragile, when I would find one, I would bend over and I would be real careful to break the stem from the ground. And then I'd bring it up to my chest and, and I'd close my eyes and I would just make as many as wishes as I could in a moment and I want to take a deep breath and then I just blow as as hard and as fast as I could because I wanted those seeds to go where it seemed like it was just this magical place that all of my wishes would be carried there and hopefully they would be answered <laughs> but you know the thing is is uh as I recall that childhood memory, I recognize that as believers in Jesus Christ, we're much like white puffballs. I wonder, have you ever been called a white puffball? <laughs> well, I say that because um, God has given us the seed as, of the gospel message to scatter, much like the seeds in the white puffball of the standing line, if you will. You know, our Lord loves us so much that he took upon himself our sin, our, our present, past, future sins, and he bared all of that and paid the price for us. And he died on the cross and he was buried in a tomb. But on the third day, he rose. And that's what we celebrate this month is that our Lord and our Savior is risen. But you know, as believers, because when we um, accept Him as our Lord and Savior, we ask for forgiveness of our sins, and we believe in Him that we are Christ followers. And as Christ followers, we have the seed of the gospel to share. You know, our bodies, I want to break it down a little bit more since I called you a white puffball. <laughs> our bodies are like the furry white parachutes uh, of the dandelion head. And let me try to paint a picture here for you if you're not familiar with this. Um, so imagine a tiniest little seed and then attached to it is a really skinny, thin, almost like a needle, attached, that, like the size of a needle attached to it. And then at the very top of it, it's this little white piece of fur. And that fur is what I would call the parachute. So when the wind comes and it, and it, and it lifts up, that piece of fur and it carries it away and it's carrying uh, with the stem and the seed away wherever the wind directs it to ultimately find soil to land on and hopefully it's fertile soil so the seed will then be planted wherever it landed and you know when we do land when because you know as God carries us throughout our journey, our day, uh, you know, sometimes we move, sometimes we visit places, wherever that is, 
God moves us in places to um, have opportunities to share the seed of the gospel. You know, being in line at a grocery store or uh, at a park bench, um, you know, uh, at a school or uh, even at a salon or the workplace. See, this is the thing I want to remind us is that when we seek opportunities to share this gospel seed, um, be it uh, you know what Christ has done on the cross for us, be it encouragement from His Word, His truth, or prayer, you know whatever that looks like, uh, God is faithful to give us the words to speak. You know we're reminded in Mark thirteen eleven that we don't need to be worried about how we're going to speak or what we're going to speak because the Holy Spirit will give us that. And, and I mention that because a lot of times people won't share the seed of the gospel because they get nervous. They're afraid that, that somebody's going to ask a question they don't know the answer to or they're just going to fumble over their words. Um, but I want to encourage us that it's the Holy Spirit that will give us uh, what we need to speak at this time that we're speaking it. You know, as a minister's wife, uh, a lot of people think, well, that's just what you do all the time, and so you must be comfortable with it. Well, I have a little secret to tell you, just to be transparent. Every time God gives me an opportunity to, to share the gospel, a uh, word of encouragement, whatever that looks like, my heart begins racing. Uh, I get really nervous. My throat will even feel like it gets cloggy. I mean, anybody, anybody with me here? <laughs> I get nervous still. I really get nervous and um, in, in my um, nature, I want to back away from that because it's uncomfortable. But then I stop myself because I realize, wait a minute, don't make this about you, Jody. This is about being used as um, God's hands and feet, as, as his vessel. And if he's given you an opportunity, you you need to remember who you're doing it for and really die to yourself. Let there be less of you and more of God in you and be willing to be obedient because it blesses, it pleases God when we're obedient. Um, one, There's one story I wanna share with you as I, I was thinking about those experiences of being nervous. I had uh, been running some errands, uh, and one of the errands was to go pick up some free um, samples, some medical, some, um, I can't even remember what it was. Anyway, it was free samples. And uh, I was standing in line, and while I'm standing in line to go get the free samples, so I saw a lady standing over to the side, and what caught my attention about her is that she looked like she had the weight of the world on her. And my heart was just moved by that. And within myself, I began praying for her, interceding for her, and felt like that was that was sufficient. I was being obedient to that prompting, right? And so I leave and I smile at her as I walk away. But as I'm approaching to go into the elevator, it was as if I heard God say, stop. And I'm like, uh, this is an awkward moment. I got to move real quickly. Either I'm going all the way in the elevator or I've got to come out of it. But I, I followed that prompting and I stepped back out of the elevator. And the Lord was prompting me to go pray for her um, out loud. <laughs> and so I'm like, oh my goodness, Lord, this is going to be weird. She's going to think I'm crazy. And she may be right about that. But anyway, I'm just like trusting the Lord. I, I'm, Lord, I need courage for this. This is, this is not easy. She doesn't know me. I don't know her. But I follow through. And I ask her, so ma'am, do you mind if um, I pray for you right now? And she just kind of looked at me, sat back a little bit. And she's like, sure, go ahead. And so I took a moment right there in the middle of the office and I prayed for her. I don't really remember what I prayed, but I do remember knowing that the Holy Spirit led me to know what to pray. And as I was leaving, I thanked her for the opportunity to um, pray for her. And, I, and I, I, I told her, I hope and pray you have a blessed day. And as I go to turn, she stops me. She says, what church do you go to? Which I found that a little odd because we didn't exchange names. 
and I told her what church uh, I attended. And so I turned and left when we departed, and I'm like, okay, God, I'm not sure what you're doing there, um, but, you know, I, I'm just like, okay, I'm just trusting you for the outcome of that. Well, later that evening, my husband shows me a message on his phone. See, this woman had found our church on Facebook and managed to private message him through the Facebook. I, I want to read what she wrote here. She wanted to thank me and to let me know that she believed God had sent me at the very moment she was at a breaking point. I didn't know what was going on in her heart. I didn't know what she was struggling with. But the Holy Spirit gave me a discernment to recognize something was going on there. And because I took that extra step, I'm not patting myself on the back. I'm pointing to when we seek opportunities and ask the Lord to give us those, open our eyes and our heart um, for opportunities to, to share the gospel, to be a seed planter wherever we're traveling, wherever we're going, wherever we land. He will give us those opportunities. But here's the thing, we've got to be willing. And I wonder if you're willing. Are you willing to ask God to open up your eyes and to provide opportunities to share what, um, what the Lord has done in your life, to pray for someone, to encourage them, to share the gospel with them? Are you willing to be used and to glorify Him and make it about Him? Are you willing to just kind of die to yourself, kind of like that seed once it gets planted in fertile soil, it has to die first before it can grow and cultivate in that way? Are you willing is the question. You know, God has given us instructions in Matthew 28, 19 through 20 to go and make disciples, teaching them to observe all that He has commanded and he will always be with us. So you don't go alone when he sends you there to be the seed planter of the gospel. You know, it makes me giggle as I think about um, how often I blew the seeds in the field next to my home. <laughs> it really explains why there was a lot of dandelions because I, I would spend a good bit of time just going throughout the whole lot that land there um, and looking for those because it was so much fun and you know I had a lot of wishes to take care of <laughs> but you know much like that the breath of God breathes on us dispersing us to carry the gospel seed and let me encourage you to search for the treasures on the turf that you land on treasured souls awaiting the good news of the gospel now, friend, I really hope that has encouraged you as Easter is right around the corner. And, you know, this is just a prompting. Easter prompts us to think like this and, and to reconsider. But let it not just be the month of April. Let it be every day of the year, every year that we have in mind that we are um, to carry out and plant the seeds of the gospel and the good news, the encouragement, the hope that so many people are living without. They need you. God wants to use your voice. Uh, he wants to use uh, your handwritten note. He wants to use your text to someone. He wants to use that phone call to reach out to someone. Don't delay any longer in sharing what God has done in you in your life. Matter of fact, why don't you share this message with someone that you know needs to be encouraged today or perhaps they don't know the Lord share this message and then follow up with them and have a spiritual conversation with them and ask them if they had any questions or that made sense or were they confused hopefully not confused but you get the idea I hope but anyway, also, please take the time to subscribe uh, here on YouTube, on the podcast, wherever you're listening at on that. If you know someone that really prefers the written portion of this, I have created that on my blog. You can go to jodyakin.com and find it there, and you can subscribe to get this monthly uh, as well, the, the blog. And it's J-O-D-I-A-I-K-E-N. Well, that's about all I got for you. Again, my friend, 
Happy Easter, and I am gonna take me a little break before a little bit uh, wakes up from his nap, and we get to just kind of have a fun day today. So, be blessed, my friends.